We got a big one in Tuscaloosa. Texas heads to Alabama, Bryant Denny Stadium. The Tide are a seven point favorite, total of 53 and a half on this. 6 p.m. Eastern Time, excuse me, Central Time, God's Time Zone, on ESPN. <laughs> Alabama, nine, five, and one against the spread as a uh, home favorite since 2021. And let's see. Pull it up on your screen here so you can actually see. Uh, Again, for those that are watching for the first time, we only have week zero and week one worth of data. These are raw stat projections. My power number is at the top up here. So Alabama 9-5-1 against the spread at home since 2021. Texas 1-4 against the spread as a dog and 0-3 as a road dog under Steve Sarkeesian. This one's going to be interesting, right? Um, You look at, I mean, Texas was terrible against the pass last week. Now, they only gave up 10 points to Rice. But regardless, PPA per pass, number 109, uh, number 104 in passing success rate allowed. They uh, were number 104 in passing explosiveness. However, that defense, uh, number one in havoc created. Well, Alabama's offensive line does not allow havoc. They were number 33 last week. Um, you know, passing downs PPA, Alabama, PPA is pretty good points added. Uh, Number 15 for Alabama's offense, number 123 for Texas's defense. Now, the question is, because Alabama is going to have to run the football to set up the pass, right? Alabama meets Texas tomorrow. How funny. How funny. Thanks a lot, Apple. Uh... (laughs) Looking at these numbers, uh, Texas's defense, number one in PPA per rush allowed, uh, number one in rushing success rate allowed, number 14 in offensive line yards allowed. Uh, However, they were only number 46 in stuff rate. Alabama's offensive line is great in all this stuff. Number six, PPA per rush. Number 11, rushing success rate. Uh, Number 44 in rushing explosiveness, which is something Jalen Milrow is going to be all over that, right? But you look at the other side of the ball. PPA per pass for Texas's offense was number 82. Now, they were number 31 in passing success rate, which means they were better at hitting the uh, shorter throws, right? Quinn Ewers still having trouble hitting deep passes. His numbers would have been off the charts if he had hit those two long balls to uh, Xavier Worthy last week. Um, but looking at this Alabama defense, a lot of this is going to be dependent on whether or not uh, Key and uh, Malachi Moore are healthy for that defense. And whether or not Alabama's uh, edge rushers can get home against that offensive line. Here is the thing to pay attention to. Texas's offense, number 126 in havoc rate allowed, and that was Rice's defensive line. Alabama, number 41 in havoc rate created. So, something to pay attention to. Something to pay attention to. Uh, PPA per rush, Alabama was only number 119. Uh, number 128 in rushing success rate allowed. But this is non-garbage time against Middle Tennessee, so eh, we'll we'll see. But same thing for Texas. Texas never really got into garbage time. Uh, they were number 58 in rushing success rate, number 55 in PPA per rush. Uh, this Texas offensive line, not awesome as far as stuff rate goes, but neither was Alabama's defensive line. I'm I'm kind of curious about this. Uh, this is going to be the matchup to watch for me is what what is what is Texas capable of doing uh, on the other side, right? And so uh, looking at this, I mean, it's Alabama at home, night game where the fans actually feel threatened for once. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take Alabama to cover the seven, even though I don't feel great about it. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.